Anyway, um, so I don't know what you guys talked about for the last five minutes, but um, I don't have much of an update. It seems like uh, Josh and Derek are done with uh, filming in Kansas there. Uh, so, or Missouri, wherever they are. Um, and um, uh, so uh, he had some observations uh, about the performance uh, and the demo ability of the unit right now. And I reminded him that it's a work in progress. And we actually, all of his complaints are, are uh, on our timeline, which is, you know, it's good. I mean, we're all aware of the issues that are, that are happening, right? Um, in particular, he called out skill interactions like, one stopping and another one starting and that kind of stuff. I'm like, yep. That's, yeah, Derek that's kind of gave us the what for yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, well, you know, I, I get it. Like, it's frustrating, yeah. but we, you know, we're planning for it. So, um, it's better than it was, right? Yeah. I, I hope so. Uh, the, uh, I did file a, like a sort of blanket bug report because I didn't want to have the time to like, break up all of his issues into separate Jira tickets, which would have been the correct thing to do. So instead, I just put together one Jira ticket. I assigned it to Chris and said, hey, Chris, figure out which of these are yours and your skills and pass it on to the next guy. You know, uh, So you guys can just circle that around until all the issues are uh, off that list. That was to Chris Vera, uh, yeah? Yeah, Chris Vera was the yes. first one I gave it to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so some of those may be legit bugs. Some of them may be things that we already know about. At least one of them and, refers to a skill that isn't even in our essential skill list. So who cares? Um, and some may be things that you know, we're going to do, we just haven't gotten around to yet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are definitely skill interaction things, or maybe even like, you know, uh, it's just it's designed to work that way, and maybe our design is a bad idea. You know. So um, anyway, take a look at them. See see what you you think. Um, and uh, extract out the tickets that you think, you know, pertain to your, your parts and just delete them from the list and pass it on. Um, okay, so that's, uh, I think that's pretty much uh, it for me. Uh, we're starting to see resumes come in for the job position, which is great. Um, and uh, we've had at least a few people complete the test. So um, I expect we maybe get a few more over the weekend uh, or maybe a bunch more, we'll see depending on what time people have. Um, so, uh, so that's good. Um, we need to start budgeting some time for you guys to now review those tests. So I understand that that's kind of eat into your dev time, but you know, you guys can manage that uh, as you see fit. Um, we'd like to, you know, respond expeditiously. I don't want to, I don't want to lag in for like a week, you know, for example, but you know, obviously, it's not a jump on it right now kind of thing. So, um, let's see. Uh, um, yeah, we're getting pretty close to announcing our production partner. We've been plowing through the details of that contract, so that'll be good. Get that out there. That'll be uh, good news for the for everyone. Um, and um, okay, now I think that's it. For me. Um, yeah, so let's go over to Chris Baker. So um, yesterday we talked about how the Voight comp tests are still uh, flaky and um, by more specifically random, seemingly random tests are failing every single time it runs. Um, so that's new? That's not new really. I mean, it's it, been it, going it, on it, forever. Yeah, I mean, it feels like we got it cleaned up for like a, I don't know what, guys, a week or something, and then it starts and it started failing again. Um, I think there's something endemic there. I think there's something underlying that's that's you know because just the fact that they're all that the skills, the things that are failing are pretty much random, um, but they do appear to be like skills that, like the timer skill where the interactions we're trying to test are probably are much more difficult than just a quick one and done you know kind of interaction. Um, so anyway, I, and the reason this came up for me is I'm trying to get the timer skill, um, you know, moved in. So, uh, I spent my morning, um, fixing, actually there were a couple of timer skill VK tests that were broken. I fixed those. Um, and I'm starting to look into the, uh, the actual 
DK tests. I, I I found I did find a bug in DK, and that's so there's a PR running right now that uh, just failed for the first time on a whole new set of things. So um, <laughs> so yeah, we need to. It's difficult because it maybe a, a hard one to pin down um, since the fails are random seemingly. Um, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time see if I can figure it out because if we can't get this thing to run, um, you know, reliably, and to only fail when you know it's supposed to fail, then it's not the tool we need it to be. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean that that needs to be our priority then. If like, yeah, that's if we can't, you know, the whole point of that system is to make sure we only go forward in terms of bugs, not backwards. So. Yeah, and I'm not sure it's, it's actually the code that's failed. I mean, my timer tests on my PyCroft all pass, but they're sometimes they're failing randomly in VK. So it's so something's going on, you know, underneath the covers that you know I like should figure out in the CI. You mean sometimes they fail in the CI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my guess yeah. is there's some sort of embedded. It does feel like they've been gotten they've gotten a hell of a lot more stable. Like we no longer get. You know, well, I, maybe I should wait and reserve my judgment. But like, it seems like Didn't at the you moment, just commit like two or three X fail <laughs> things just to get to get us a go. I mean, that's yeah, that was just right. in the timer skill, and that was before we had all these changes included. Yeah. So, but even that, it was all in the one skill, as opposed to like the stop. You know, um, telling. Telling the new skill to stop fails, you know, one out of ten times, and telling, uh, asking the time fails one out of twenty times, and asking, you know, blah blah blah. Like, I, I do feel like it's gotten it's gotten better. It, it's still, and I know that people in the community are super frustrated by it because they're just like, what is the point of this thing if it just blocks every PR that we want to merge, you know, that we want to put forward? Um, so I. I we, I can promise ever anyone listening from the community, we are very frustrated as well. Um, but uh, yeah, as Michael said, it's it's about making sure that we're we're going forward and we're not we're not adding in regressions as we go. Um, and once we do get it in place, once we do get it solid, then it'll let us move a lot faster. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean. That does need to be a priority. Like we just can't, we can't like I said, we can't really accept PRs unless they pass, right? So, if the system yeah, is broken, we need to, you know, we have to go down that side road, you know, and get it fixed. I'm all I'm on the side road now. Okay, great. <laughs> Made some progress today, um, just by fixing one bug, but um, yeah, there's there's still more to be done, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I was aware that there were issues with the system, but I didn't really, I didn't realize they were endemic. Like, I thought it was like an issue would pop up and then you guys fixed it or something. But I didn't realize that it, we were in a state where, like, you had to run the test five times to get it to pass or something like that. You know, um, you know I thought a few weeks ago that we would, you know, this is the reason the XDG, you know, PR finally went in is that we got the test to pass. Now, I don't know if, you know, that was a fluke or not, but I mean, they just, it's not reliable. And, you know, if it was the same scenario as failing over and over, I think that would be, oh, yeah, something's broken here. But since it's just breaking here and then breaking here and two breaks this time and one break this time, that's not, you know, that's not the problem of, of the uh, the code being pushed. It's so, Yeah. So that's the framework is broken somehow. There's bugs in the framework. That's my guess. And my guess it's all around message box handling and, you know, and, and weights and race condition, you know, that kind of stuff. That's what I'm guessing. Um, we already fixed one of those. Which may actually, well, I, you know what? I do recall a discussion a while back. Like, we may actually be resolving, um, revealing race conditions in the code, which are legitimate bugs, right? Like, there shouldn't be race conditions, in my humble opinion. Um, like, you know, the system should be well defined. Uh, well, it's not just necessarily race conditions in the code because, um, you know, there's there's a whole different message bus mechanism in the um, in the VK tests that does some different things. There's um, 
you know, there's there's weights in there that maybe not wouldn't normally be put in the sleeps and stuff that you wouldn't normally see in normal operations. So it's I don't know if it's apples and apples necessarily, but I think a lot of the stuff I see becomes a problem is when we start doing things like waiting. This goes back to the whole, you know, sequential versus asynchronous stuff too, because really all the VK tests kind of have to be sequential because you can't say, you know, did this work until <laughs> this event pops up or you know, this thing is spoken or whatever. Um, I've actually spent a good part of yesterday uh, looking at videos about and reading articles about how to test event-driven architectures because it's it's actually a, it's it's a it's not an easy problem to solve. Um, right now, what we're doing is certainly one way to do it, which is to you know make it synchronous um, instead of asynchronous. But um, but yeah, it's not necessarily the best way to do it. Because yeah, if you set up a lot of givens for a scenario, then you, yeah, you're kind of constraining it to be like, okay, well, we need to have these initial conditions. So you have to finish this other thing first so that they don't interfere with each other. But yeah, so that forces it to be synchronous. But yeah, yeah. I mean, there is a better way to define it. Um, yeah, there might be. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, some of our stuff is synchronous. I mean, if, if you do a request, then X, Y, Z, A, B, and C need to happen a lot of times in sequence. <laughs> um, you know, we just... You know, we use these asynchronous architecture to do it, but it's it's a synchronous process. Yeah. Which goes down all the rabbit hole that we won't go down today. Okay. So uh, are you working on any specific uh, areas or are you mostly working on the, the VK test suite? So uh, well this morning it was getting the timer stuff, you know, and I had some failures and um, now I'm yeah, I'm kind of looking in general at the VK test suite and the and the, it, more, mostly the helper functions um, we use. I'm looking at those some more and see if there's anything in there that's might be causing problems. Uh, well, um, yes. It's entirely possible there's one little line fix fixes it all. Who knows that I just submitted a fix for? Guess we'll find out. <laughs> one character fix. Is, it's yeah. The, the best. <laughs> Love it. Um, not even changing the character, just just bumping just it from here to there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I have been spending a fair bit of time uh, responding to people in the community. Um, uh, you know, in line with the frustrations I just talked about, people are, you know, particularly the, the open voice crew are, are pretty frustrated about, um, about what they see as a lack of progress. Um, and, you know, I think, I think we need to spend some time unpacking it, um, with them because you know there, there must be more than just like th these are not features that you're pushing um and i think my what i'm thinking at the moment is that uh, i'll do a blog post um that kind of talks about what we're really well either some some i think we should put out a blog post that, that talks about you know what we've been talking about and what i've been talking about in the community but just does it into much more like here is you know on our blog here is a thing we can point to um that you know we really need to get this solid stable robust foundation in place first before we before we put lots of shiny new features on top of it um and you know just like with the vk stuff if we can't if we can't trust the foundation then um, every time we add things, we're just moving, we're just creating more seismic shifts in that and potentially adding more bugs, but even just adding more complexity, which makes the existing things harder to, to look at. Um, and yeah, it's going to feel like a, it's going to feel like slower progress in the interim. Um, but it's going to create a much more 
you know, reliable system um, that people can build upon. So, yeah. Well, I'm curious, I mean, are they expressing frustrations at the same sorts of bugs that we are trying to fix right now or that we have in our backlog for the next couple of sprints? Or are they not seeing those bugs and that's why they're frustrated because like they don't see that we're actually working on something that seems important to them? Um, I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to like communication. They're, they're kind of seeing in, the, in their view that, you know, our internal team are working behind, you know, over here behind closed doors and, and not communicating. But like, I have to push back on some of that too. Like, you know, like the, the Chris doing the, the PR around, um, you know, using a particular way of emitting a message on the bus. And then that turned into, you're going to deprecate the skill API. And like, I know there was some conversation around that, but like, they really jumped very quickly to like, you're pulling out code, which was never suggested and, you know, um, isn't going to happen. So like, or at least, you know, not if it did happen, we would have a big conversation about it and we'd talk about why we were doing it and all that sort of stuff. Um, so like at the moment, I think, you know, there's, there's, they're feeling like they're not, there isn't, there is a lack of communication and I feel like, you know, we've lost some of that trust with, with, you know, a particular, um, group in the community. Um, and we need to, we need to build that back up. Um, uh, so, yeah, I think I've said it on here before, but I, I want to try and pull back a little bit from, from active development and, and spend, you know, even though it feels like that, like, moves us forward, but I think it's more important that, that I spend more time, uh, you know, trying to, trying to facilitate this um, conversation a bit more. So, yeah, so there's that, but there's, a, there's also the, like, you know, here is a great feature. Why have, why hasn't it been merged? You know, um, why don't, why don't you even spend time looking at it? Um, and you know, that might be a large feature. It might be a very small feature, but like, you know, uh, but all of that is like, well, that, that takes time. Um, you know, because we want to, we want to, you know, review things properly. Um, we want to add tests to them. We want to add documentation for them. Um, you know, that all takes time. And, you know, even if it's a, a relatively simple coding change, you know, maybe it defines a particular interface that skill developers will use. Um, and so then we want to, we want to properly think about what does that interface look like? Not just put the first thing that comes to mind in the code, because then that's, that's then de defined as the interface. And so then if we want to change that, it's a, you know, pain in the butt for, um, skill developers. So, yeah. There's a question for you. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question for you regarding that, that process. Um, I guess I've been making an assumption, which I, I now want to question. Um, if a community member uh, makes a PR for a particular feature, is the next step that they're expecting to happen that we will look at that and and you know give comments on it, or does the community at large actually weigh in on those things before we take a look at it? Uh, it's kind of a combination. Um, but I think that we've, we haven't prioritized in our time, you know, reviewing PRs. And so it has been largely the community commenting on them. Um, I think the misnomer there is the community can comment on PRs till cows come home. Sure. But if we don't act on them, they didn't ultimately get acted upon. Yeah, I guess the question I had it was really more along the lines mm -hmm. of, well, when, you know, the, the our team submits a PR, obviously, you know, that, well, the way things are right now, that might be the first time the community sees that piece of work. Right. And it's their first exposure to it. So what we get when we submit a PR is the community reacting to our, our work. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, then we work through that process, but, uh, but if, but it's not a one to many relationship, it's a many to many relationship. Right. So any member of the community can submit a PR 
And my question was, you know, was well, it, it was really I like. I don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to explain the. Uh, <laughs> My question was whether uh, the expectation was that, you know, community member A submits a PR and then the rest of the community can all will and not just can, but will all look at that and make render an opinion as to whether that, you know, that new thing that they've defined meets some kind of, you know, standard of goodness or, you know, there's an alternative way to do it or, hey, you know, you're, there's no test for this or whatever, you know. Well, um, when, when, when the community it's a PR unless you're if you're a community member unless you're looking for it you're probably not automa automatically notified that something somewhere has changed right so the only community involvement I believe is when community members know each other and communicate like is the case with Ake and Jarvis for example but I don't know that if somebody else out of the blue commits a PR that anybody but us would become aware of it, right? And they would get any feedback. So I don't believe it's the case that there is an inherent expectation that the community would review the PR before it made it to us. I think the concern is more that they don't believe we're, they're making it to us fast enough and that we're feeding back on them in a positive manner. And it's nuanced because not all PRs are created equal and not all of them deserve to make it into our code line. And we've been really, you know, to the best of my knowledge, I've never seen anything nasty, right, that says this PR sucks and we're not going to, you know, allow it because it's bad code. But it, it, the question needs to be asked, wh how do we respond when that happens? <laughs> because I haven't seen it. And I have seen PRs that certainly could be considered worthy of that kind of response. So. So I think this is just a bigger issue of how do we engage with the community at a PR level? How do we communicate that some PRs aren't necessarily aligned to our roadmap and therefore are not finding a high priority in our review process at the moment? And I think a lot of it um, falls back to what Gez was mentioning, which is we're kind of singularly focused right now. Um, we're trying to build uh, you know, a strong foundation and unless the PR specifically goes towards that that activity, they're probably going to be placed on the back burner for the immediate future. And perhaps he can communicate that in his blog in a polite way. Yeah. Well, and this, you know, we've talked about this and maybe not in any of the recorded conversations we've had, but definitely, you know, our desire, my desire to share our roadmap, you know, with the community. Uh, I know Gez has made some efforts in that respect in terms of experimenting with the uh, GitHub and, and the, um, you know, the, uh, some of the Kanban features about outlining sprints and, you know, trying to give some visibility as to what our priorities are in the, in the near term. Um, but, uh, but I definitely want to expose more of that. Like we've got, I don't even know off the top of my head, like 10 or 12 sprints that are kind of loosely defined right now around specific areas of concern in terms of what we think the priorities are. I think, I think, you know, there's, there's no harm. And certainly I think a lot of good in sharing at least the outline of what those sprints are. Right, so that they know where uh, where certain things you know kind of fall into our priority, and they can either give some feedback on you know on the list itself, or start to make some plans around like, oh, okay, well, this is a you know this is where my current submission kind of fits into that, or oh, they need help in this area. I've got some ideas about that. Maybe they can even help us out. Well, that's that's a good start, as long as the process is such that the PRs that are submitted get some sort of feedback that says we're not looking at this right now because this falls under sprint you know 27 and that's going to happen uh, late october and we'll get back to you then and then somebody should be tracking that right and so that in yeah. late october we get back to them and say your pr was approved because it's great or it was rejected because it's bad or we want to modify it or whatever but yeah there is a there's a process behind that right well and that's one of the benefits yeah. of, of to using the, the GitHub projects is that um, uh, once we do open it up, which I, one of my questions is also, are we happy for that to be open now? Because it's, you know, it's never going to be finished, but like I figure just open it up but as long as you're happy with the basic structure and we'll give it a go. Um, then people can see when tickets, when, you know, PRs or issues or whatever get added to that um, 
to that project board. Like, you know, in their PR, it will say this was added to Sprint 25. Um, and so they can kind of, they can see that as well. Um, doesn't mean that we don't also provide a comment that says, hey, you know, we're not yet ready for this. We're going to push it. Um, but we will we will get to it. Um, but yeah, there, there is also that automated layer, which, which will be helpful. Well, I mean, just start to bear that out um, specifically for the relevant issue at hand. Do we not have a GUI related sprint coming up? Well, we're in one right now. And was not the PR in question a GUI related PR? What are you talking about? The one that we discussed yesterday with the unhappiness from one of our friends. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I think that one, like, uh, so you're talking about the notifications stuff. Um, I think that will come into the, the skill interaction um, sprint. But Perhaps they were confused. They saw that we had a sprint for GUI. They thought it was a GUI related. Fix well, and, uh, no, I think I mean that that was because that's it's it's a little bit separate because they they proposed that before we defined all of our sprints. You know. Um, yeah, it just fortuitously fell into that sprint was what I was getting at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we could well we looked at it during the GUI and we didn't believe it was applicable for this sprint, but interactions are coming up and we believe it's applicable there. Well, no, yeah, I won't, I won't go into detail there. Or but whatever, I'm not saying that exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying but, that by categorizing the PRs into potential future sprints, we open up that line of communication. Yeah, yeah. And then, and also, you know, it's not just like, here is our list of, of what we're going to do. It's like, please, please suggest, please add things onto this if you think that they're relevant. So it's, you know, because it's, it's, entirely positive that we've missed something, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, well, let me just ask you is, so we've got in this, uh, this Confluence document, a list of, of all the sprints I referred to that the dozen or so that are sort of loosely defined. Um, maybe it's not that many, even, but there's, there's a bunch. Um, the, are all of these represented in the in that uh, GitHub projects? No, I've just I think I've just done the 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 top five or whatever there are. You know the of the twenties, the not the thirties and forties. Yeah, yeah, because they're a little bit more defined and and you right. know, in the. But I mean, I can I can extend that to to the others, for sure. Yeah, I think it's I think it's worth putting them all in there just yeah. so they can see. It. So everyone's got, a, you know, at least a broad overview of things, even if they're not very well defined, you know, uh, they can see, oh, look, they plan on working on the how, you know, this far into the future, but not until we do these other things, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, oh, hey, look, skill settings is on there. That's the thing that I think well, everyone everyone will appreciate doing some, getting some work on, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. And, you know, and, and subscriptions is in there, which I'm sure no one but us cares about. But look, hey, we got to do it, you know, at some point. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. And hey, if you want new features, um, you know, installed, let's get and help do some uh, PRs and some bug fixes. Help us get it stable, and then will that'll help everything along too. Right. When which they don't really, you know, really nobody has the option of doing right now because they don't know what we care about, where we're going next, and where the bug fixes are. Like obviously, if somebody fixes a bug and they submit it at any given time, like, you know depending on how much work it is to like verify that that's a real bug fix and a good bug fix, then, you know, those could be going in at any time, I think. But, um, but if you, you know, you're talking about like being proactive about like, Oh, let's find bugs in the system or I've noticed the things, but I haven't really reported it. Like, you know, um, if they see that that's on our roadmap, like, you know, uh, a few weeks or a month or so in the future, then people at least have the opportunity to chime in on that. And, so, yeah, I thought I'd um, try and do a renewed effort of, of going and tagging things, um, you know, with like help wanted and things like that. Um, but it also comes back to what we talked about in whenever we talked about it, uh, about, you know, if there are if there are issues in a public repo, um, then we should really be tagging, like put logging that ticket in the GitHub repo rather than in, in JIRA 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I, you know, until, you know, uh, we decide that it's important to try to get those systems to coordinate. I think that we use, uh, I, I think the one level of duplication that we have across, uh, GitHub and Jira is just the definition of the sprints themselves. But like, you know, the community bug reports stay in GitHub, you know, our internal, you know, uh, bug reports, which we can start using GitHub for, if it, you know, for bug reports and stuff, but maybe our internal tasks, you know, can stay in Jira if it's easier for us to track them there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I definitely don't want to get into the issue of like, we're trying to replicate things across until we get an automated way of, of managing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I'd like to keep the sprints, you know, sort of, at least in, in GitHub defined at a high level, you know, with a clear definition of what the scope is and the intent and that kind of thing. Um, and then let the community like either assign their PRs or their bugs against, against those broad things. And we can you know, start to manage that. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I also did a, a big um, translation push yesterday. So I saw the, the many, many yeah. notifications. Sorry for the 50, well, I don't know how many emails, the many, many, many emails. No, that's good. I was happy to see it. Um, all right, uh, Ken. So regarding bugs, in a previous life, and I'm not saying we've reached this point, I ran a company where we had hit critical mass on bugs. And so what I did was I developed a system where we had bug bounty points and swag. And sometimes that works, just throw that out there. If, if that's an important activity. Uh, today, I went through my open tickets from the previous sprint and tried to close up all the JIRA tickets. Most of the outstanding stuff was assigned, was associated with either wiki or um, misinterpretations that primarily were corrected by the confidence level fix PR. Uh, so I reassigned those to the reporters to verify that once that gets pushed, these things work. Um, and then uh, everything has a story, right? Uh, the last bug that was open was related to wiki performance and timing out. And I spent the day remembering that I had already submitted a PR to fix this months ago. Um, and so I'll, and I don't care about that. I'm just saying, and I can do it again. It's, there's a decision that needs to be made. So the problem with the existing wiki skill, if we recall, is that it's um, doing too much. So it tries to support disambiguation. It tries to support more. It tries to support um, auto-suggesting. It fires up parallel tasks to go and hit wiki twice, one with auto-suggest on and off. And you know, then, then, and then what it does is it got, kind of goes and gets summaries first, and then it you know, selects one of those, and then it goes and gets the page detail and yada, yada, yada. So the performance issues in the wiki skill are endemic in its design, and I've already gutted it like a fish once and fixed it. Um, so the problem is with this architecture, it responds anywhere between seven to 10 seconds later, most of the time, once in a great while, five seconds. Um, but the there's an issue where you'll hear it <laughs> read the correct answer and then say, I don't know. Uh, and that's probably due to the fact that the underlying framework doesn't know how to deal with the fact that it sent out requests to participants and it gets back a response from Wolfram and it gets back a response from DuckDuckGo and it gets back two responses from Wiki. And it doesn't really know how to differentiate those because it's keyed on the same value, which is the skill ID. So that's probably what's causing that problem. Um, but the bottom line is when I submitted that PR, it was rejected because it changed and altered the existing behavior and the community didn't like that because they wanted more functionality. And if you recall, I made it a configurable parameter. So you can either live with the skill and its performance and its timeouts and associated behaviors, or you can gut it like a fish and get rid of that backward compatibility and it'll come back in two to three seconds. It's your call. So I gave the ticket back to you. And that's the end of the tickets I believe I had open for that sprint. So hopefully tomorrow I can get back to the stuff I was working on. So when you say you, 
Who is that? Oh, Chris Gez, because yeah, he he's the originator of the ticket. So my point is, here's your two solutions. You can live with this architecture and this performance, or I can gut it like a fish and you can lose this backward compatibility. Tough decision. Well, what is this have anything to do with the state stuff or is this? No, uh, no, 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 no. This is inherent in the architecture of how this wiki skill was implemented. Okay. Um, it's a it's a multi fetch kind of process. So you go and you get the titles and then you go and you use the title to get the page and then you extract the summary and the image. I don't do that. I go to a different endpoint and I grab just the abstract and I'm done. So I don't support this ambiguation or more or double fetching and all of that. So it's just a different architecture. Well, okay. So I, this is where, you know, regression tests come in, right? Uh, there should be an objective test as to whether the new system performs better than the old system. Um, and it may be that the test is in terms of, you know, if, what, if the priority is in terms of. No, I've gotten, I've hmm. gotten the tests because, um, they don't hit some of the things that cause the timeouts, right? The occasional timeouts. I've gotten the tests in both cases to pass 100% and added a bunch. So it's like, I think there's like 40 or 50 wiki tests, VK tests. It's not a test issue. It's not a qualitative performance better issue. It's a, you can't have it all, right? Like Derek wanted the abstract. So I went to a different URL to get that with a single shot. This one doesn't get the abstract and it does multi-fetches. So it's just a different architecture and a different design. They both functionally work. One's just slower than the other. But I mean, it has more features and functionality. So well, you know, would they both so you're saying that they would both pass the same VK tests as oh, they're sure. right now? Yeah, yeah. I've had them both pass 100 percent Okay. So then the question I guess I would, you know, I would ask Well, the, no, no, no. They are, can't possibly right? all pass the same tests if if like one of them you can say, hey, read more, you know, tell me more. And the other one, you can't. We don't have any VK test for reading more. Oh, <laughs> OK. And that's so that's where I was going. I'm like, OK, so for the reasons that people want to reject this PR, I think what they need to do is submit, you know, the test or the test scenarios. Or well, that's least, fine. But they communicated. The community was pretty clear that they that this altered the behavior. And I specifically went out of my way to make more a configurable parameter if you recall so to retain that backward compatibility okay but that's that's a red herring it doesn't matter whether it's on or off it's so the, the performance is inherent in the architecture of the skill are, right. you, are your changes not... in a pr there or excuse me are the changes in a pr on the on the skill or what change the, the... You're, 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 you're fish gutting your fish getting that that was a pr that was submitted probably two months ago oh, right so you you're talking about the same the the old one yeah uh, there's several there were several old ones that went through a lot of iterations which is why i wouldn't recommend going back to that and trying to piece it together just give me a decision if you want to live with what you have then what we have now is good enough if you want me to gut it then i'll gut it um it, it'd take me less than a day and i'll push up a new pr but you know then you have to protect me from the flack i get from the community that I've uh, broken backward compatibility. OK, so I think maybe we can just pose this as a question to the community and say, hey, so we've got a potential fix for this for this issue, which is that it takes too long to respond. Uh, Ken, can you characterize the performance difference in rough terms? Yeah, three seconds versus 10. OK, so we've got a proposed change that will give us this performance improvement they pass all the VK tests identically as the VK tests are written now. So the question for everyone out there then is, uh, are you either A, willing to accept a drastic rewrite of the skill that retains the improves the performance by 3x and retains the correct answers in the VK tests as are, they are currently defined? Or would you like to add more VK tests to cover scenarios that are not currently in the tests uh, and and uh, make sure that we you know that the the submitted change also covers those new tests that like, sounds because, reasonable and then whenever we think about changing behavior you know yeah, the way the tests are defined now there's no change in behavior right so we need to define new tests that would identify the uh the offensive change in behavior otherwise we can't you know we do we can't do regression tests so Yes, does that sound reasonable to you? 
Um, yes, I I fall on one side of that fence, so <laughs> but, it, but it sounds reasonable to me. Uh, okay. I, I don't have an opinion one way or the other. It's it's a decision that's above me. I will, as a good soldier, do what I'm instructed to do. <laughs> if we want to re maintain backward compatibility, then leave it as is. I have nothing to do. If we want to improve the performance and um, get rid of it periodically timing out, then I have work to do. It's that simple. Okay. Well, um, I, I think as an experiment in, at least as an experiment, uh, I think it'd be interesting to you know, pose this to the community, see if this is, you know, uh, because you know, from where I'm sitting, we have not identified the VK tests. We've identified the VK tests that we care about. We could probably sit here for, you know, ever and define more and more of them, right? The sum total of all human knowledge. But so, uh, so there's an old saying we had at IBM, which is "elegance sucks," and uh, it, part of this falls on me, right? So I looked at the skill, and it was written very elegantly, and I really didn't want to gut it, which is why I went ahead and said, "Okay, I'll take this old one and." you know, put it back and fix it up, right, to pass these bugs that were reported by JIRA. Uh, so, you know, I'm as guilty as anything because, you know, and I'm looking at it and, and I'm saying, well, it's elegant, but it's probably not, wasn't designed to fit into this architecture because I really believe that at the foundational level, it's also part of the problem is that Ake decided, well, I'm going to fire off two parallel requests, even though those fire off like four. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to fire off two parallel requests, and one is with auto-suggest on and one with auto-suggest off. I mean, I had to disable the auto-suggest one because that was giving us the problem with what's an automobile and an answer to cat, and that's due to auto-suggest being on. But I left that in there, and then today I realized the system doesn't know how to deal with that, right? It has one key, which is wiki skill, or right? skill wiki, whatever the key is for the skill ID. And it's confusing the responses, so it gets one back in time, and it starts reading it, and then... It gets done and it reads the other one and it says, oh, here's the wiki skill response, right? And it goes, oh, this one timed out. Well, yeah, because you just read the dialogue for 20 minutes. So it's just the architecture probably wasn't, isn't designed to handle each skill reporting multiple responses back as well. Is that and common so, query that you mean? What's that? The common query? Yeah, yeah. When common query sends out and says, who's out there? And, and you know, do you want to get some extended time to answer and know who? You have an answer here. Here's your answers, right? And when the same skill responds with two different answers, I think it gets confused. So, you know, when I saw that cut, I'm like, geez, this is so elegant. I, I, I don't have the, the heart to get rid of it, right? So I just set auto true equal to false in both requests. But in retrospect, I should have taken them out. <laughs> so, but again, uh, or, you know, or, or I mean, it sounds like common query has that's that's a failure to properly define common query like well maybe maybe it's the skills responsibility to figure out which of the two responses is the one that really one way or the other we need to define it yes. yeah so i don't know but all i'm saying is that, that part of it falls on me because it was a very elegantly written skill it has classes it, it encapsulate classes for just like a string that's the summary or or a list of strings and stuff like that and you know like i said um i know better but <laughs> so yeah. You know, I, again, I didn't want to also be discouraging to the community because it is a community contribution, basically, and I, I want to encourage that sort of stuff. So, so some of it falls on me, but it, but that's all water under the bridge at this point in time. It's real simple. If you want it to be fast and not time out as frequently, I can do that. If you're comfortable with it the way it is, it sounds like reach out to the community, ask them to provide some VK tests to exercise the additional functionality that they're concerned about losing, and we'll move forward. I, I'm cool either way. Um, all right, guys, uh, I will leave that with you uh, to handle as, uh, as appropriate. Um, all right, anything else we should discuss? No, that was it for me. Cool. All right, well, thanks. I mean, I, I think um, a lot of our discussions recently have involved, you know, uh, an element of the community and their feedback and whatnot, which I think now that we're recording, hopefully the community will be able to see. And uh, I mean, this has been going on for a long time. I think it's, I, I totally get that because it's invisible, it's useless to them. Um, and so, you know, it's it's my goal to try to raise the visibility of that. So, and 
and Gez is taking some more time to to focus on that now as well. So I think I think that's good. Um, and uh, you know, look forward to uh, smoothing out this process as you know in the, in the coming weeks and months. So anyway, um, all right. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, we'll uh, talk again tomorrow.